Wales. The beautiful Australian bush. It smells really good too. <laughs> Stradbroke Island and we're standing on Frenchman's Beach and I know I've showed you this place before in my salt Seawater sea water salt video um, but there's something really special happening here this time um, I don't know if any of you remember but the big volcano the big volcano um, that erupted in Tonga not long ago on the east coast of Australia we're just starting to see pumice so pumice is um, like volcanic rock, foamy lava, <laughs> volcanic rock I'm told, um, and it floats. So when there's a volcano or a volcanic explosion out in the Pacific, eventually, well this in this case, it has flowed to the east coast of Australia. So there's usually some pumice stone on the beach here, but this time there's heaps more. And um, I'm gonna collect some, and I'm gonna make some soap with some pumice stone in it, because pumice is a perfect, Kind of exfoliant for a really good cleansing like mechanic soap that sort of thing so i'm going to collect some now we'll have a look i'm not going to take too much i'm just going to collect a few um it's really really light and it's kind of got that nice scratchy feel wow that one feels really light like almost like chalky but obviously it's not but yeah, so I'm going to grab some of these and take them home and I'm going to somehow bash them up and turn them into powder and make soap with them. So I thought I'd show you the whole process of me making this soap and I've just got my little soap shaker here and some hot water. I just decided to give these pumice stones a bit of a clean up before I uh, use them to make my soap. Now most of you are probably not going to have pumice stones like I've been able to, to get from the beach. Um, but you can buy pumice powder and pumice stone ground online it's widely available from soap making suppliers in Australia at least and other places online so look for it online and you'll see a little bit later on you're going to see me grind up these stones I grind this pretty finely because I'm trying to make a soap that is like and the Aussies will know this like Solvol which is a really fine um, exfoliating kind of mechanic soap really well known in Australia um, Unfortunately, they don't make it anymore. I'm just rinsing out the stones here. Make sure if you do have stones and you wash them, give them a really good rinse out um, if you need to clean them off like I have. So Solvol, it was a fantastic soap. You can't buy it anymore. Um, and it, it had this amazing fine grit to it. It was not scratchy at all, but it was fantastic for cleaning greasy hands. I just put them in the sun to dry them off for a couple of hours while I've got everything else ready. Uh, so Solvol is kind of what I'm going for in this video. But yeah, you can use whole pumice stone if you've got that or small bits or buy some pumice powder or some ground pumice and you can make this soap. These stones are so beautiful. I oh, just loved every bit of making this soap. So here's how I crushed it up. So if you've got stones, this is what you do. Just get a good solid granite mortar and pestle, mortar and pestle, mortar and pestle, and bash it up. Pumice is pretty soft in, in terms of stone. It's not a hard stone at all. It's certainly not going to do any damage to your granite mortar and pestle. So my geologist husband tells me. Um, and just 
bash it up, grind it up. It only takes a few minutes per stone to get it to a really nice fine powder. If you like your, your pumice soap to be a bit more gritty and a bit scratchy even, because some people do, then don't grind it so finely and buy ground pumice that is um, not too fine. But if, like me, you really don't like really scratchy soap and you want this to be uh, nice and fine, it's kind of like almost really fine sandpaper consistency in the end of the uh, finished soap, it's not scratchy at all, then grind it really finely like this. You can see what I ended up there with was beautiful fine powder. I did sieve it out because I was afraid. I didn't want any big scratchy lumps in there at all. Uh, and this is just gorgeous. So if you're buying ground pumice and it seems scratchy, then get a mortar and pestle and grind it up to make it even finer. It's amazing what you can grind in a mortar and pestle. These are the fats that I use for this soap. Um, as I said, I was trying to emulate Solvol, that classic iconic Australian soap, and it uses beef tallow or palm oil and coconut oil. These are a couple of old labels that I found online for Solvol soap. One of them uses palm oil, palm kernel oil and coconut oil, and the other one used, um, you see on the bottom there, sodium tallowate. That means tallow, which was probably beef tallow if it was made in Australia, um, and pumice and coconut oil. So that's the oils that I chose to use for this recipe. So for that 80% tallow portion of this recipe, it's 80% tallow and 20% coconut oil, you can use either tallow from beef or sheep, you can use lard, or you can use palm oil for that portion of the recipe. Or make this soap using whatever soap recipe you want. You don't have to use this Solvol style recipe, but just use your favorite soap recipe and add some really finely ground pumice to it and that will be beautiful. So I put my fats out in the sun to melt because I'd had the tallow in the fridge, it was pretty hard. And while that was um, softening up, I came in and got everything else ready. So this is my essential oils that I use. I used cedar, tenfold orange and lemon myrtle to give that nice sort of citrusy fresh scent that the original Solvol soap had. I've just got those in a little jar, give them a good mix and set them aside. I did also add some citric acid to this recipe. I've been using that a lot of my recipes lately. Um, so this recipe is formulated for the use of citric acid as well. Make sure you check out the written recipe details in the description box for all the details about that. You must not change the lye amount if you're using citric acid in this recipe. Here is my sodium hydroxide that I'm getting ready. All the details and all the measurements for this recipe are in the, the link on my blog page. So just check the description box for that. I'll put that aside. Make sure you put your lid on your sodium hydroxide if you're in humid weather like I am because it will absorb water from the atmosphere. And for the lye solution water, I used seawater, which I also collected from North Stradbroke Island. Um, I accidentally forgot to put the citric acid in first. <laughs> So I did put a little bit of sodium hydroxide in and then went, oh, whoops, better put the citric acid in. But that's okay. Uh, mix the citric acid in and then added the rest of the sodium hydroxide and that seemed to turn out okay. But you should really dissolve your citric acid in your water first before you add the sodium hydroxide to it. Then I got my moulds ready. So I use these lovely little silicon moulds. You'll see more of them a bit later. And... Getting ready to make the soap now. So this was all of the tallow that I had. Um, as I said, all the measurements are in the, the recipe where there's a link below. And I did need to use a little bit of RSPO certified palm oil just to make up that portion. So it's 80% tallow or palm or lard if you've got lard and 20% coconut oil. But as I said, 
you can use any soap recipe for this. Just use your favorite soap recipe. Even my laundry soap recipe would be great to add pumice to. I think that would be fantastic. Any good, nice, long lasting hard bar would be great. So this is my mise en place. I've got everything in place, ready to go. Um, got my oils, got my pumice, got my essential oil. And I have melted the oils. I did melt these very slowly on low power in the microwave. Um, the oils were about 45, I think, and the light solution was about 55 Celsius. So that was perfect. Um, I'd never made this soap before. <laughs> So I was really hoping it wouldn't set up too quickly and I'm so grateful it just behaved beautifully at those temperatures. Um, I was really relieved actually because I wasn't sure. I, I blended it with the stick blender a bit. I wanted it to really come to a proper emulsion but I didn't over blend it. I think that's important. I wanted this recipe to stay slow because I didn't know how it was going to go with adding the pumice in and I did not want it to accelerate the trace at all. So I add my essential oils in there, just stirring as I go. Make sure you stir as you put them in because if you get big clumps of essential oil in your batter that can speed it up. And then I started adding in the pumice. I've probably got about two thirds of a cup of very finely ground pumice here. Um, and I wasn't sure how much to add. So I kept adding it as you can see uh, and whisking it in. It didn't whisk in very readily initially. So I did a little bit more blending, which obviously helped. Um, but I was scared that it was going to go fast on me and, and, and get thick, which I didn't want to happen. So I was very, very cautious with my blending. And then as I went along, I started to realize that if you just keep whisking, the stone powder does actually break up pretty well. You've just got to whisk it a fair bit. So I realized I didn't need the stick blender from then on. Here is, this is funny, I, I thought oh, I'll put a bit more in and then I thought no, I'll just put the whole lot in. <laughs> so I wanted this soap to really feel like Solvol and have that really nice super fine grit to it um, and I wanted that nice grey colour as well. So I just threw the whole lot in. I cannot tell you how much it was, I just eyeballed it. Um, but you will know what to do if you add this to your soap recipe. Just eyeball it. You'll be able to see the grit in there. The total oil batch size for this recipe is close to 900 grams, so just under a kilo of oils. Um, and I use about two thirds of a cup of pumice. So you could probably maybe about a cup's worth would be good if you're using around about a kilo, about two pounds of oil. So yeah, it just depends on your recipe. Uh, poured these into these silicon molds, which turned out just Beautiful. I was so happy with the result and I did spray a little bit of alcohol on the top, just isopropyl alcohol, just to help prevent any soda ash. I put these into my cooler and I covered them up with some little bits of cardboard and things and I just left that soap in there. I really love gelled soap so it's important to leave it wrapped so that you get a really nice gelling. And here's the soap the next day. You can see I'm scraping off a little bit there. Some of the cardboard and the little bits of core flute I had left a little bit of residue on the soap, so I just scraped that off. And these are the ones from those little olive molds. There's no olive oil in this soap at all, which is funny, but I just love these molds. They're really pretty. Um, so I wanted to use them. It turned out really beautiful. I did pH test this soap too just to test out the lather and the lather was incredible. It felt just perfect. I 
I'm really loving this soap. Um, I can't believe how nice it's turned out for a Solvol <laughs> knockoff pumice soap, um, pumice stone soap. I'm really impressed with the texture of it. I'm glad I put all that pumice in. In fact, I probably could have put even more in. Um, you can feel it though. It's got a really mild kind of it's hard to describe how it feels, you just have to try it. It is not scratchy at all, but it's got a beautiful, soft, kind of really fine sandpapery type feel, but not, not sandpaper, but you know, really, really fine. It's just lovely. And the essential oil blend, the lemon myrtle and the orange essential oil are just perfect, so fresh. It is absolutely lovely. I can't wait for my family members and friends to try this. I'm hoping my dad is going to be my number one critic, um, I think. Not in a critical way, but I'm going to get him to test this. Um, and my brother and, and different people who tend to get greasy hands sometimes working on machinery and that sort of thing. So it's going to be good to try out. Um, I hope you enjoyed the recipe and you give it a try. And thanks for watching as always and thanks for all of your support. I will see you again soon. Keep taking good care of yourselves and happy soap making. Bye!